start. Good morning and welcome to everybody. It's uh, wonderful through modern technology to be able to meet together online and also uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this morning, even though it's a bright and beautiful morning, we were anticipating uh, stormy weather and decided that we would not take anybody to the church, St. John's Presbyterian Church in Toronto on Broadview Avenue. And instead, we're here in my home uh, and uh, having our worship service here from home. Also, our music director, Mrs. Grace Hahn, was not going to be able to join us this morning so we wouldn't have had the benefit of her music anyway. Uh, so this gives us a chance and uh, to try out our new technological skills. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. We'll begin to, with our call to worship. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Let the people bring thanksgiving to the Lord God, that we might glorify the Lord. Let us worship God. And I apologize if you can hear my dogs joining us in the background, worshiping. We'll begin in prayer. Let us pray. Let all the earth acclaim the Lord. Worship the Lord in gladness. Lord God, the wonders of your creation, the splendor of the heavens, the beauty of the earth, the order and richness of nature, all speak to us of your glory. The coming of your Son, the presence of your Holy Spirit, the fellowship of your church, Show us the marvels of your love. We worship and adore you, O God of grace and glory. God of mercy, God of love, in humbleness of heart we confess our sins. We forget to love and serve you and wander from your ways. We are careless of your world and put its life in danger. We talk of our concern for others, but fail to match our words with action. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Merciful God, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. And be assured that in the mercy, love, and grace of God, we are a forgiven people. And this day is a new day and a fresh start for each one of us. I'm going to read um, some of the opening verses of Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence before whom is a devouring fire, around whom is a raging storm. God calls to the heavens above and to the earth, that the people may be judged. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare God's righteousness, for God alone is judge. Amen. Rick Johnson, one of our members, is going to read uh, a couple of our scripture lessons for us. 
Good morning. Our Old Testament lesson is from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And we're also reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Rick. I've asked Elizabeth Spears if she would read our gospel lesson for us, and I don't know, it might be nice if she puts herself back on camera to read. Hi. <laughs> I made it. Our gospel reading this morning is Mark 9, verses 2 to 9. That's Mark 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves 
and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on the earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Before I start my sermon, I'm going to say a word or two about our Old Testament lesson, Elijah and Elisha, because it's always been a favorite story. But the, the concept that I'm thinking of is into the whirlwind. Elijah goes into the whirlwind. We have no idea where. Neither does Elisha. They're left behind. But there's a concept that occasionally when we follow God, we go into the unknown, the whirlwind, without fear because we know we're going with God. We can rejoice. And that concept is sometimes used to say we can be at the forefront of change. We have the ability to follow God into new and uncharted territories. And as a church and as individuals, we go into the whirlwind knowing that God goes with us. So I've always loved that idea that God's with us whether we're here doing the things we're used to doing or whether we are doing something entirely new that might be a bit scary. We're, we're with God either way. That's why I thought we'd include the... Uh, the Old Testament lesson this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Amen. One day, Jesus goes to a high mountain taking Peter, James, and John with him. The four go by themselves. Once they are alone on the mountaintop, Jesus' clothing becomes dazzling, whiter than anyone on earth could ever make them. As Jesus stands radiant before them, Elijah and Moses appear and talk with Jesus. We call this experience the transfiguration. As on other occasions when they experience the transcendent, the disciples are terrified and do not know how to react. Peter says, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwelling places, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. At this moment, a cloud overshadows them. From out of the cloud comes a voice saying, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And just as quickly as it started, the transfiguration ends. The clouds lift, and once again, the disciples are alone with Jesus. 
As they go down the mountain, Jesus orders them not to tell anyone what they have just seen until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Every year at Epiphany, we celebrate the light of God. Each year, as we come to the end of Epiphany, we remember the Transfiguration. One of the most mysterious moments of Scripture, the Transfiguration allows not only the disciples, but also us, to see the light of God shining in and through Jesus Christ. Christ. The vision of Moses and Elijah joining Jesus teaches us about their connection. Moses represents the law, Elijah the prophets, and Jesus is here revealed as the Son of God. Together, the three show us the whole kingdom of heaven. The law and the prophets are met and fulfilled in the gospel of Jesus. The truth and power of God are revealed. This is a vision of wholeness and completion. No wonder the voice from heaven tells the disciples to listen to Jesus. His life has significance far beyond what they see with their physical eyes. For us, the Transfiguration offers a glimpse of God's wholeness and power. Just like the disciples, we are not meant to stay basking in the glory of the mountaintop vision forever. After we experience transfiguration, we also, like the disciples, turn down the mountain to the place where we came from. Like them, no matter how powerful a connection we find with the divine, we return to the life we have been leading once we have been reassured by God's majesty. Any encounter with the transfigured nature of the divine leaves us renewed and strengthened. We live in a world in which we need continual renewal and refreshment. This is why we consider the transfiguration every year. It's good to remind ourselves of the foundation of our faith and belief. Jesus is Lord, and few accounts of scripture teach us this more clearly than the one we read today. In fact, the message is so powerful that Jesus urges the disciples not to discuss it until after the resurrection. Only the resurrection can prepare people to understand the truth of Jesus' divine nature. The transfiguration teaches us Jesus is both fully human and fully divine. This knowledge does not conflict with our ordinary ideas of reality. Rather, it increases our understanding of what reality is. Snow is snow. In Canada, we all know that reality. The amazing concept of all the atoms of the universe working together in a way which supports us, including creating planets and solar systems and galaxies and weather systems, that's also reality. Whether we see God in the individual snowflake or the massive scope of the universe, looking with the eyes of transfiguration shows us God's light and power within the elements. Our concept of reality grows with each insight.
The reason to seek out transfiguration is to find our connection to the divine. When we experience God's power, the mundane takes its proper place. Life may be difficult at times, but there is a hidden side to the story. God lives in us whether things are going well or are challenging. The transfiguration helps us find God's power in every case. I don't know about you, but I often need renewing and refreshing, especially these last months, which have been challenging. COVID-19 remains vigorous despite our attempts to slow down transmission. Even a small loosening of caution resulted in dire consequences, depressing and frightening many of us. This week, some young friends of mine in their early 30s, who have been extremely careful and cautious, contracted COVID-19. Fortunately, their symptoms are mild and they are beginning to recover. Nevertheless, the news frightened me and many of my friends. Such fear and anxiety is echoed everywhere I go. Yet, we do not give in to fear by giving up. Rather, we rely on God's power to help us increase our efforts to do everything we can to delay the spread. That is expanding our ideas of reality while claiming the power of transfiguration. While we are so occupied taking precautions against disease, it might seem counterproductive to focus on that spiritual experience on the mountaintop. In fact, this is the most important moment to focus on the divine reality. God's power is beyond what I can dream of or imagine. At the moment I am most fearful, remembering my connection to the divine and how powerful that divine is, helps me put my trust in God. The transfiguration is for us. It shows us God's power. The light of God shines on Jesus and within him. We are one in Christ. That means God's light shines on us and within us. There is a dimension beyond the one we see and taste and feel. There is a dimension of reality in which the unexplained exists in power and beauty. This is the reality we need to remember regularly. How do we find it? We live it. Living in love brings the power of spirit into our lives. We overcome our inertia to show God's love. We proclaim the love of God by our words and our actions. When we cannot meet in person, we remain guided by God's love. We meet in spirit. We pray for and with each other. We pray for ourselves and we pray for our neighbors. Love connects us to the divine nature of God. Love connects us to the Christ within us. Love allows us to recognize the Christ within the people in our lives. We listen for the word of God and we proclaim it every way we can. And so we live the reality of the transfiguration. Amen.
Well, this is the moment I really miss our wonderful ministry of music that we have at St. John's because uh, normally I would sit down for a moment and, and uh, let us all bask in a, a bit of music while we, uh, while we think about whatever we're going to think about. But we'll launch right into the announcements. Thanks for being with us. It's uh, different to do it here, but I think we're going to be fine. And next Sunday, we do anticipate being back in the church building again. Uh, again, thanks to everybody who is supporting St. John's financially. We really appreciate that. Uh, as you know, your offerings may be mailed or brought to the church, or you can contact our treasurer, Nancy Stevenson, to be enrolled in our PAR program. The offering receipts have been prepared and they did go out by mail. Uh, it was in the email, I think they went out to early February, you can check your email. So if you don't get your receipt, um, you should let us know. And um, if you don't get your receipt by the end of this week, you should let us know to make sure it hasn't gone astray. Um, once we go back, uh, next Sunday into the church building. We are still constrained by the very small numbers that the government allows us. And so we still need to know in advance if you plan to come in order to follow the rules. And then on uh, Sunday, the 7th of March at 3 p.m., we're going to have our annual congregational meeting. And we're going to do it this way, over Zoom, from home and uh, we will attempt to make it work. In fact, part of the reason we wanted to do this this morning was to test out um, how well it would work so that we could uh, manage our annual congregational meeting a little more easily. So we thought it was a good opportunity to try out our technology. Uh, when the annual report has been prepared and it's in the process now, we'll send it to you by email for you to download and print and if you're going to find that difficult uh, we'd like you to let us know uh, probably by contacting Lori McGugan by February 21st if you want to get a hard copy of the report and then we'll organize how to get the hard copy to you because I think we hope to minimize mailing costs the the annual reports are uh, kind of a big deal to mail and you'll notice when you get your annual report that there's a page in you can fill out if you wish to include your emergency contact information entirely voluntary. We'll keep that information as safe as we can and then if somebody, uh, it's one more person who knows your emergency contact in case there is an emergency. And finally we'll continue our Bible study this week on Thursday, February 18th at 2 p.m and you'll get the uh, information and link to that. Um, I always think I'm going to send it out earlier, but it usually goes out on Wednesdays. Thanks so much to Nellie who does all our communications for us and all the people who are supporting us electronically. Those are all of the announcements that I have at the moment. So we will continue our service in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us in every experience of life. When we neglect you, remind us of your presence. When we are frightened, give us courage. When we are tempted, give us power to resist. And when we are anxious and worried, give us peace your peace which passes all understanding and help us to know that whatever direction you lead us in 
we can safely go with you into the whirlwind and serve you in ways we never dreamed we might, as long as we are assured that you are with us. Lord, if we weary in your service, renew our energy and refresh us that we may be able to continue your work of proclaiming your word. We are so thankful for all your goodness and love towards us, for the joys of our family, our home, our friends, our congregation, for our church, and for the whole body of Christ who worship together to spread your gospel of love and justice for all. We thank you for the strength you give us that supports us. And we thank you when our lives are touched by joy. But even we thank you that we know you are with us when we are touched with painful experiences that scare us or make us mourn. We pray that you would be with all those who suffer, with all those who are ill from COVID or from cancer <coughs> or any other disease. And we ask that to our physical beings, you would bring health and wellness and healing. But more importantly, for our souls, we pray that you would help us to always find our connection to you. And whenever we feel lost and alone, help us to find our way back to your fellowship. We thank you for the life of Jesus that led him to the cross and for the triumph of his resurrection and his ascension. Lord, we pray for our community, our country, the nations of the world, that justice might flow down like water, and that all might be free from oppression and bias and bitterness and strife. Where there is conflict, help us to find a way towards peace. And by the power of your love, help us to live in love together. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith, especially for those known to us who have entered into the joy and peace of your presence. Grant that someday we might follow their example and come to share with them the glory of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit is worshiped and glorified forever. And we pray together as we have been taught, saying our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.